right, so I get a lot of questions asking, what do I need to become an environmental engineer? Like, do I need to take this class? Or do I need this type of degree? Or this type of transcript? Or maybe this certification? I don't know what to do. I don't know what I need. But I do want to get this job as an environmental engineer. Great, so you came to the right video. I'll be answering some of those questions for you. So I know you can search all these things on Google or the internet, but I mean it could vary greatly depending on your own situation. What you search online is pretty broad and may not always be applicable to you. Even what I say may not be true for your situation. I might say that you will need to have this one thing, but it turns out for whatever you're applying for, you didn't need it in the end. Or the opposite may be true, where I might say that, oh, you don't need to take this class, but then you end up not getting that job because you didn't have that certain skill. So just a heads up, whatever I'm presenting to you, it's based off of a pretty broad sense. It's whatever research I did, and it's mostly based off my own experience. So just take whatever I say with caution. Now, I mostly want to talk about like the physical accomplishments that you can factually prove and present and probably print out on a piece of paper to your employer. So the first thing I want to talk about is the bachelor's degree. You don't need to graduate with a bachelor's in environmental engineering to get an environmental engineering job. Yes, you heard me correctly. You don't exactly need a bachelor's in environmental engineering to get this job. And it doesn't specifically have to be like a bachelor's in engineering or a bachelor's in science or a bachelor's in arts or a bachelor's in technology. All you need is a bachelor's degree. Okay, so that's all you need. Just make sure you have a bachelor's degree. Of course, it makes sense to get a bachelor's in engineering because obviously that's what you want. I mean, that's the type of field that you want to get into. But besides that, there is no specification on what type of bachelor's degree you need. But again, take into consideration that you'll be wanting to get into this engineering field. I say there are no specifications because you can graduate with a bachelor's in chemistry or a bachelor's in environmental science or sustainability or civil engineering and you can still work as an environmental engineer. It just has to be somewhat relatable. So as long as you graduate with a degree that's somewhat relatable to environment or engineering and you have the skills to do whatever responsibilities that the employers are asking for, then the employer is pretty flexible in whatever degree you graduated with. Next off is the engineer in training certificate. So before you get this EIT, you need to pass what's called the fundamentals exam, the FE. So the fundamentals exam is just a one-time engineering exam that college students usually take sometime in their third year or fourth year. This just puts them on the right track to becoming a fully certified professional engineer later on in the future if they want to pursue that route. So what they do is they take this fundamentals exam and then once they pass that, then they can go on and apply for this EIT. Once you pass the test, it's pretty much a guarantee that you will get this certificate. All you have to do is just apply and like pay the paperwork fee and you know just sign all these papers. But for the most part, once you pass this exam, you're pretty much guaranteed the EIT. Now the bigger question is, do I need this EIT to get a job as an environmental engineer? The answer to that question is no, you don't. So me personally, I do have the EIT, but my job does not require it. It is highly recommended that you do get this EIT because eventually if you ever choose to do so you can go on to pursue and get a professional engineering license again in the future if you want to do it but not every job or not every employer even requires you to get this EIT you don't have to do it it'll just look good and prepare you more but again not every job says that you don't qualify because you don't have this EIT again highly recommended but you don't have to do it it is more work for you because you have to study for a test you know pay the paperwork but who knows depending on your situation, it may or may not be worth all that hassle. The third thing I want to talk about is the professional engineering license. So piggybacking off of the previous point, you can only get this professional engineering license, this PE, once you've accomplished and acquired your EIT. Remember that getting the EIT means that you're still a trainee. You're not professional yet. So this one is a bit more specific. You'd have to look up into what state you're living in if you're living in the United States, because each state does vary a little bit. But there are prerequisites that you have to fulfill in order to get this PE license. Honestly, I don't know all the steps because I personally do not have my PE. I'm still an EIT, I'm still a trainee, so I'm only halfway there. Anyway, in order to get the PE, just follow what the nceeeses.org website says that you have to fulfill, and I'll link that down in the description down below. And again, just read the prerequisites for your state. I do, however, know that in order for you to get this PE license, you have to take another test a harder test than the EIT, a more specific test depending on what field you're going to. Once you take and pass that PE test, you again have to go and apply, do all the paperwork, but this one is a bit different because you're not guaranteed to get it. 
you do have to have some years of experience working in this field and you have to have like some letters of recommendations from another professional engineer. So that means if you're working in some firm and they don't have any professional engineers, then you can't apply and get it. You basically have to shadow another professional engineer so he can write a letter for you so you can become a professional engineer. I know it's a bit weird, right? How do they even start the cycle? So just to be clear, be mindful of what you need to apply and you know guarantee that you'll get it for your state so you don't waste all the money and the hassle when you apply. Again, just make sure you read what your state needs on that website. Now going back to the most important question, do I need this PE license to work as an environmental engineer? Again, the answer is no, you don't need to get this license in order to get a job as an environmental engineer. Because look at me, I don't have a PE license, but I still have a job as an environmental engineer. If you do get this license though, you will be much more marketable because you have what most people don't have. You have a professional engineering license. Again, it takes a lot of work to do it, but in the end, it'll probably be worth it for you. This is highly recommended, if not required for you, if you want to climb up that career ladder. Next, if you're like a student, are transcripts. Transcripts and GPA, basically. First off, you do not need a 4.0 GPA in order to get this job as an engineer. I personally graduated with like a 3.6 GPA with my master's. You might hear that and say, oh, 3.6, that's still pretty high. I have like a 3.0 or less. Honestly, I did have like an easier time during my master's than I did during bachelor's, but that's a whole different story. Regardless of GPA, I have yet to hear of any employer from any of my classmates and myself have them ask for what their GPA was during their college years. I applied to over like 300 jobs and none of them asked for my GPA for my bachelor's or master's. For the most part, they just asked me, do I have the skills to perform this type of work? Lastly, what classes do you need for your transcript? So this is where it gets very broad. There are no specifications as to what classes you need to take in order to get a job as an environmental engineer because the responsibilities vary greatly depending on like your company. Some of them might be more field work, some of them might be more office work. So it depends on whatever you're applying for and in what sector too. If you're going for water, for example, you might need to take some lab classes as opposed to like a civil engineer working in a wastewater treatment plant, you might need to take some design classes. So all of that does not really answer the question like what classes do you need to take? All the prerequisites in your university should answer that for you. But you'd have to do that research on your own, depending on you know, your own university. You don't need to specifically take AutoCAD or MATLAB or some designing courses or have some chemistry labs. Because according to your university, all you need to do is just follow the prerequisites in order to graduate with a bachelor's in whatever you're applying for. So if you major in environmental engineering during your bachelor's, they'll already give you prerequisite classes that you need to fulfill. So you will probably be taking like one course in AutoCAD and one course in chemistry lab. So again, all these skills and classes that you are asking for, they will have already included during your prerequisite courses just to graduate with that major. But if you aren't majoring in environmental engineering and you're majoring in say biology, for example, then of course you would lack some skills. You would lack the classes that are necessary for engineering. So that's where you're gonna have to look up what do civil engineers, like what classes are they taking? What classes do you need to take to have these engineering skills? And I mentioned already MATLAB, AutoCAD, and maybe other designing courses. Overall, I know what I'm saying is that I don't have a full complete list because it all depends on your university. It depends on your field too and your employer and your responsibilities for whatever job you're applying for. In the end, I'm just saying follow whatever your university requires you to take for your prerequisite. And so that concludes the video. Those are the provable accomplishments that you will need or maybe not need to take in order for you to become an environmental engineer. Again, this is just coming from me, from my own research and from the internet and based off my own experience. Some stories or experiences that you might hear from your friends can be different. So again, just take whatever I say cautiously. It's not always going to be right and applicable to you. If you like what I said, go ahead and share, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.